Let's take a look at the Bronsted-Lowry definition of acids and bases. So if you remember the Arrhenius acids and base theory is that um, an, an acid is something that when dissolved in water, it increases the concentration of H plus hydrogen ions. Um, and an Arrhenius base is something when dissolved in water, it increases the concentration of hydroxide. This definition is more narrow in scope. So the Bronsted-Lowry definition allows um, a lot more of, a lot more compounds to be classified as acids and bases. So under the Bronsted-Lowry definition, an acid-base reaction is something that involves the transfer of H plus ions or protons from one substance to another. So if you remember, redox was anything that involved a transfer of electrons. Something loses electrons, something gains electrons, then you have a redox reaction. If you have a transfer of protons, something loses protons, something gains, then you have an acid-base reaction or um, a neutralization reaction as well. Um, so how uh, an acid is a proton or H plus donor, and a base would be a proton or H plus acceptor. The acid would be losing an H, the base would be picking up an H, and these would always be occurring together. So how can I just say H plus or proton? These are actually the same thing. So if you look up H on your periodic table, it has an atomic number of one, so there's one proton. Plus means I've lost electrons, so now I have no electrons. And if you look up the molecular weight or molar mass of H, it's 1.008 um, atomic mass units, AMU. So we know a proton weighs one AMU, so if there's and a molar mass of one, then it only contains a proton and no neutrons. So an H plus is a proton. Because a plus, H plus is just a proton in solution, if it's in an aqueous solution, it's going to immediately react with the water and turn into hydronium. So we can also say H plus and hydronium are interchangeable. So when you're doing things like pH, we say pH is negative log of H plus or negative log of hydronium, they would be the same thing. Okay, acid and base always have to work together to transfer a proton. One thing loses a proton, one thing gains a, a, a proton. So how do I know something's an acid? How do I know something's going to be able to donate a proton? Well, it must have an H atom that it can lose as an H+, plus, meaning that in the bond, it must leave behind its electrons and just the H+, plus comes off, leaving the electrons behind. We call this an ionizable H. The H has to be capable of ionizing. So what should that H be attached to? Well, we want it to be attached to something pretty electronegative because that other atom, like an O or an N or Cl, that would attract the electrons in the bond pretty strongly, and it would be the H would able to be break off without its electrons. We don't want the H to be attracted to something that would have an equal attraction to electrons or a lesser attraction to electrons. So something like carbon, we consider the CH bond to be nonpolar. They would have equal attraction to the electrons, and that H would not break off as H plus. So if you're looking for which H ionizes, don't pick the H that's connected to a C. Um, the only exception here is is really HCN. Okay, a base must have non-bonding electrons or lone pairs on it that it can use to bind to the H+, because this is the site that the H+, um, would attach to, and that's what, how a base would be able to accept an H+. Okay, so here is an acid. Circle the ionizable H. I would not want to pick the H is connected to a C. This H is connected to the O. The O is electronegative, so it would hog the electrons. The electrons would gather closer to the O, and it would allow that H to break off as just H+. Plus. Um, the COOH group is a carboxyl group, and if um, a certain compound has a carboxyl group, we can call it a carboxylic acid. These are typically weak acids. Okay. Um, if you're able, if a substance is able to act as an acid or base, we can call it amphiprotic or amphoteric. Um, so it will act as a base when it's combined with something more acidic than itself. It will act as an acid when it's combined with something more basic than itself. So in order to act as either an acid or base, it must have an ionizable H that would allow it to act as an acid, and it must have non-bonding and a non-bonding electron pair or a lone pair, which would allow it to act as a base and accept that H plus. Okay, uh, you should always maybe draw out the structures to tell if something's amphiprotic or amphoteric. Um, as, a, as a hint here, for polyatomic ions that contain ox, uh, hydrogen, um, so these hydrogen carbonate, hydrogen sulfate, or we call it bicarbonate, bisulfate, it might be helpful to draw the polyatomic ion without the hydrogen first and then attach on a C. Um, so that will help you to kind of see where to add on an H+. Okay. So the structure for hydrogen carbonate, 
look something like this. It might be helpful to not draw the H on yet, to draw the carbonate ion, which is CO3 2 minus. Okay, CO3 2 minus would have four bonds, two single, one double. Um, but wait a minute, that would actually have resonance, just so you know. So those bonds would actually be equal in length and somewhere between a single and a double bond. Um, and then I would want to attach the hydrogen onto one of the oxygens that are singly bonded because um, those, those hydrogens would have a negative charge. Um, they would attract this proton a lot more than these lone pairs here, and it would, it would, it would um, bond onto one of those lone pairs that, so it could accept the H. Um, so this is what the hydrogen carbonate ion would look like. It would still have resonance as this double bond can move here or here, so it would have um, delocalized electrons there. So this has an ionizable H. It has lone pairs here that could another H could get accepted onto here and turn into the car, to, uh, carbonic acid, H2CO3. So this could act as an acid or basis amphiprotic. Okay, HSO4 minus, you might want to draw SO4 2 minus, the sulfate ion first, and then add on an H. Um, so here's the sulfate ion. If I kind of think of this H not being there, there would be a lone pair. Um, and I would do two double and two single in one of the resonance structures. This actually has multiple resonance structures because all of the bonds would have been blends between double and single bonds. Um, and then I could attach the H onto one of the oxygens that have a minus one charge onto one of the lone pairs. So so um, this is what the sulfate hydrogen sulfate ion would look like. This would have resonance as these double bonds could have moved, um, in including this oxygen. So this would have multiple resonance structures. Um, now this could act as an acid. It could donate this H and turn back into the sulfate ion. SO4 2 minus, or it could pick up another H on one of these lone pairs here on this oxygen and turn into H2SO4. Um, sulfuric acid. So this could act as an, as an acid or base. It's amphiprotic or amphoteric. And if I draw H2O, this could act as an acid or base. I could lose one of these H, H's as just H plus and leave behind a lone pair and it would turn into hydroxide. Or I can accept an H onto one of these lone pairs, uh, accept an H plus and it would turn into hydronium. So water can act as an acid or base. Okay, um, you can be given a reaction and asked which is the acid and which is the base. So kind of look at the substances and see what they turn into. HSO4 minus is turning into SO4 two minus. So that H is coming off. It's donating. It's losing or donating an H plus. So that must be the acid. And NH3 is turning into NH4 plus. It's picking up that H plus. It's accepting the H plus. It's acting as a base. Now what you'll notice is in the other direction, um, these substances can act as acids and bases as well. SO4 2 minus in the other direction, it would turn into HSO4 minus in the reverse reaction, and it would be picking up an H plus. So the SO4 2 minus can act as a base, and the H NH4 plus would turn into NH3, that would be donating an H plus, it would be acting as an acid. So this can act in, in the opposite direction. This is your base and this is your acid. And what you'll notice is HSO4 minus turning into SO4 2 minus, that is a conjugate acid base pair. As HSO4 minus is your acid, and then what it turns into is its conjugate base. It's now capable of acting as a base and going in reverse. So we call these conjugate acid base pairs. Okay, NH3 and NH4 plus would be a conjugate acid base pair. NH3 would be the base and NH4 plus would be an acid. So every acid has a conjugate base. It's what's formed by removing the proton or, or donating the H plus from the acid. So if HA is your acid, A minus would be the conjugate base. For instance, HCl is your acid. Once you remove or donate the H+, plus, it turns into Cl-. minus. That would be your conjugate base. HCl and C minus, Cl- minus are a conjugate acid-base pair. Every base has a conjugate acid, which is formed by adding or accepting a proton or H+, plus to the base. So if B is your formula for the base, BH+, plus would be the conjugate acid once it accepts its H+. Plus. It's now capable of donating that same H+, plus and turning back into B. So if H2O, let's say, is your base, okay, as a base, it would accept an H+, plus and it could turn into its conjugate acid, which is H3O+, plus, the hydronium ion. Hydronium is act capable of acting as an acid and turning back into its conjugate base. So that's a conjugate acid-base pair. 
Okay, here are some acids. Take a moment and write the conjugate base. The conjugate base would be formed once that acid donates or releases an H+. Okay, so this would turn into um, ClO4- minus the perchlorate ion. So notice I'm taking one away from the charge and removing the H. Uh, essentially removing H+. Plus. Removing H+, plus would turn into H HS-. Minus, okay, this would turn into pH3. This would turn into CO3-2-. Minus. These are the conjugate bases for these acids. And these all sh are shown, showing conjugate acid-base pairs. Okay, write the formula for the conjugate acid of each of these bases. So if they're bases, they are accepting a proton or accepting H+. Plus. So I'm going to add an H plus onto the formula. So I'm going to add an H and increase the charge by 1. So this turns into HCN, HSO4-, minus, HPO4-, two minus, H2CO3, HCO+, HF, and H2SO3. These are all the conjugate acids of those bases, and shown here are the conjugate acid base pairs. You might be asked to write a reaction, and in a reaction, as I said, you can always identify two sets of conjugate acid base pairs, whatever is the acid on this side. Once you remove the H+, what it turns into is its conjugate base. And whatever's acting as a base, once it accepts the H+, it's going to turn into its conjugate acid. Okay, so I'm telling you HSO3- is amphiprotic. It can act as an acid or base depending what it's reacting with. Um, so I'm, I want you to take a moment, write the reaction of it with water if it's acting as an acid, and write the equation in which it acts as a base with water. Okay, and identify the acid-base pairs as you do so. So if it's acting with if it's acting as an acid, okay, that means it's going to donate or lose an H+, plus, so it's going to turn into SO3-2-. minus. And then water would be acting as a base. It would accept that H+, plus and turn into H3O+. Plus. Here's one conjugate acid-base pair. Here's the acid. Here's the base. Okay, and here's another conjugate acid-base pair. Here's the base. Here's the acid. If it's acting, if um, the hydrogen sulfate ion, sulfite ion is acting as a base, it would be accepting an H+, plus, so I'd be adding an H+, plus onto it, and then the water would have to act then as the acid, so it would be donating the H+, plus. and here are your conjugate acid-base pairs. Okay, uh, one more time, write the reaction between HCl and water, okay, so HCl is the acid, water is the base, so HCl would donate an H+, plus, and the uh, water would pick it up, and here are your acid base, um, your acid base pairs. It doesn't matter which order you write them in. Um, and notice I'm just putting one arrow to the right because HCl is a strong acid, so this would actually go into completion. Cl minus would be such a negligible since HCl is so strong of an acid. Cl minus would actually have negligible strength as a base, so this would not be able to go in the reverse direction. We'll look at that more later in the chapter. Okay, um, and then here, uh, here's my base with water. This is a weak base, so I'm going to put the double arrows to show an equilibrium condition. It's going to be able to go forward or reverse. Um, if this is acting as a base, it's going to turn into its conjugate acid by accepting an H+, and then H2O will act as an acid and turn into its conjugate base um, once it donates its H+. Okay, so notice that if you need to show a species act as, acting as an acid, which releases H+, or as a base, releasing OH-, uh, you can make that species react with water, um, and notice the acids releasing H3O+, because it's really the water that's turning into the acid, and the base is releasing OH-, even though there's no OH- in the formula, because it's actually H2O that's turning into OH- once it reacts with the base. So it's kind of almost obeying Arrhenius theory as well, the acid releasing H, H3O+, plus, the base, or H+, plus, the base releasing OH-, minus, even though there's no OH- minus in the formula. Okay, just so you know, many weak bases like ammonia don't contain OH- minus in the formula, but they do ionize in water because, as I said, it's the water that turns into the OH-. minus. So if you ever need to show a base releasing OH- minus and there's no OH- minus in the formula, make it react with water, and the water turns into OH-, minus, and that's how you get a base increase in the concentration of OH-. Minus. Um, a lot of uh, organic compounds contain NH2 groups, um, and that's an, a basic group. We call it an amine group, um, and it kind of works very, uh, very very much like NH3, and that's why it gets its name amine.